morning, everyone. Uh, it is such a nice surprise, and it's great to have um, Brother Ed Mullins and Darla with us this morning. Praise God. It's been a while, right? And I'm so glad that you guys are here, back with us. And uh, um, welcome those who are on. Um, thank you for joining in with us. And we know that you'll be blessed this morning. And all of us will be blessed this morning. Thank you for being here. I have a scripture I want to read. In Psalms 40:16, And it says, But may all rejoice and be glad in you. May, but may all who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. May those who long for your saving help say, will say, the Lord is great. Amen. Yeah, amen. God, you are great. And that's what we're going to sing about your greatness and everything about you this morning. We come together. Thank you, Lord, that we are here to worship you, to give you all the glory, all the honor. It's just not enough just to say thanks. We just lift our hearts to you, our mind, heart and mind to you, God, as we worship you, how great you are. So bless this service. Bless your people this morning. Bless those online. Bless those that are here with us this morning. In your name, Jesus, amen. Amen.
the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry, these bones will sing.
finding myself in the midst of you. Ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, 
Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you for your presence in this place. We thank you for being present in our worship. And Father, we want to just continue that thread with our tithes and offerings. May it be a sacrifice of praise to your name. May it be a sacrifice of praise to the work you are doing in the earth. We are so thankful for the provision that you have given us, Lord. And it is our privilege and our honor to give back of our time our money, our effort, our presence in the moment, Lord God. We ask that you would guard and direct. We ask that you would bless our offering this day. In your precious name we pray. Amen.
So I want to share a little bit. We had our Dare to Move Friday night uh, dance worship just this last Friday, and thank you for those that um, were able to come. Um, it was a night of just uh, worshiping the Lord in the dance, and uh, just we just had pre-recorded music, and we're able to. It was just a nice evening to come and just worship. Um, one of the songs is called Freedom, and it was a fast, upbeat song. And it says, uh, dance like the weight has been lifted. You know, sometimes we carry a lot on our backs, on our shoulders. There's us women, men, we do. We carry a lot, and it's just like sometimes it just seems so hard to bear sometimes or pick up. And um, it just the verse, I'm just going to read it. Step out of the shadow, step out of the grave, break into the wild, and don't be afraid. Run into wide open spaces. Grace is waiting for you. Dance like the weight has been lifted. Grace is waiting. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. There is freedom. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. Come out of the dark just as you are into the fullness of his love. For the Spirit is here and let there be freedom. Let there be freedom. Bring all your burdens. Bring all of your scars, your wounds, your hurts. Come back to communion. Come back to the start. Chains will, will fall. Prison shake at the sound of Jesus' names, and lives are made, and, and hearts are awake. <laughs> for the Spirit of the Lord, there is freedom. And I just want to say thank you for Crystal Aldridge. She's the one that did our flyers for us. She's very creative and, and did this. And then also for Samantha Briggs, who did uh, uh, our T-shirts, Jenna, our T-shirts. We had Dare to Move. And on the back, we had the scripture that says, Acts 17, 28, In him we live, move, and have our being. So... Yeah, and it was just to encourage everyone to keep moving, keep moving in your faith, keep taking that step forward, and, and there's victory in Jesus. Amen. Good morning. It's good to be back in the house of the Lord. I love coming here. It's uh, back before I went to work full time, it was uh, a blessing to be here every day. Now I... I don't get that opportunity. I'm here probably, not counting Sundays, probably three times a week, but I like to be here every day. But uh, anyway, we've got a person in our audience today who hasn't been here in a couple of years, um, Ed Mullins. Uh, he left, he, when the pandemic hit, he uh, wasn't allowed to come out and anything like that, so we were able to get him to come to church thing about Ed is, well, he thinks he's a good-looking guy, and we call him a good-looking guy, but he's all right. Am I not speaking loud enough? You're a good-looking guy, Ed. I know, see? So see, I wasn't wrong. But Ed's been around a long time. Ed, uh, is, uh, Aunt Hattie Davis was the one that had the tent inside of her front yard that where this church originated from. And then we went from that little tent in the yard and got together with another church over on Sierra Avenue. And then we built this place here. So Ed is, I don't think, even when my, my grandpa was here as pastor, and my dad was here as pastor, then we had Pastor Ziegler. Ed Mullins was here. Then we had... Um, Pastor Eric, Ed Mullins was here. Pastor Tiffany, Ed Mullins was here. Pastor Gary, Ed Mullins was here. Our elders running it, Ed was here, and now you've got me. Ed's at like a cornerstone in this place. Ed, uh, he, he, he's been around for a while. So after service, Ed, I didn't know Darla was going to be here, but uh, we got you a cake inside the kitchen. We're going to have some uh, uh, coffee, some cake, and some tea, and some pop, or whatever you want. We're just going to visit with each other since it's been a while. Is that okay? Yes? I promise I'll play victory in Jesus in the kitchen, okay? All right. I said you're good looking, Ed. You're good looking, right? Oh, good. Good. I think I'm talking pretty loud. We don't need to turn it up, do we? No. Okay, we're good. All right. So, uh, 
Ed was really surprised when he walked through here. He hadn't been in through here in two years, so he hadn't seen none of the changes. And I was talking to the ladies Friday night, but, it, you know, it, it brought it back to me today as I was walking Ed through and showing him everything that God has allowed us to accomplish around here. One of the things that I'm very proud of is that with regards to materials and with regards to contractors or whoever I brought in this place, they were Christians. And if I had to spend a little bit more money, I did. Um, the flooring was from a Christian company. The guys that painted, Christian company. Uh, the guys that did the wall, the guys that laid the floors. I did the electricity and the, the fans and things like that, and I did a lot of other things, but I made sure that we, I didn't want to bring the wrong element into the church. Well, same way with our products that we brought in. Um, that map that we've got posted inside the foyer back there. Last week we talked a little bit about it, and all the pins you see on it now is where we're being watched around the world. I don't mean just in California. I don't mean just the United States. But I mean, if you see a pin on that map, that's where we've been watched for more than 15 minutes. And we're, our goal was to get all of it done. When I did some research on that map, I, I found a company on Etsy, um, a Christian company, that uh, map retails for $1,400. Um, we had a donation to our church, and uh, we were able to get that for $500, which was a great savings. Without those of you that know, do you guys know where that came from, the map? It really touches me now that I know where it came from. And I, I've known since day one, but ever since what's going on in our current situation. That map came from Kiev, Ukraine. And they were Christians over there that we bought this from. And they shipped it over here. They're the ones that gave us that discount and everything else. And so when you look at that map, when you go through there and you see Ukraine on there or whatever, understand they, they need your prayers right now. They, we got to pray for what's going on. We've got to pray that our president does the right things. Um, Putin's talking a lot of weird um, hopefully there's some type of negotiation. I'm very impressed with their president or chairperson or whoever it is that's over there right now. The United States offered him an opportunity to exile, and he said, no, I'm staying here. We're here for the fight. And I, I, I love a president like that. Um, I couldn't uh, say any bad words about that guy. We'll see how far Putin goes, but right now our prayers are with them and, you know, everything that's going on inside that area. This thing works. That's great. We, uh, we've been having problems the last six weeks with regards to our technology. And me, um, I'm not the old type. I, I have my Bible upstairs, and I use it quite regularly. But down here, I'm all technology, and I've got a little paper if I had a, I haven't brought my tablet up here yet, but I, I'll probably get to that pretty soon, too. But uh, we've had some problems with regards to our uh, programming um, that produces uh, what you see on the screen, the songs, the media, everything out there, fighting with our live stream service. Um, the two programs didn't like each other, so I upgraded it, uh, or, yeah, upgraded it on uh, Friday, and I was hoping that we had uh, hardware to handle it, and the hardware works fine. Software's having fun, so we've got the programs talking, so I'm not freezing anymore, and I don't have to worry about a bunch of things, which is great. I wish all I had to worry about was coming up here and preach, but I've got all the technology, the sound, the video, everything that's streaming right now on my back, too, and that goes along with that, so... Anyway, we've been talking about faith being the victory. The one thing Jesus did was he came to the world that we may have and enjoy a life and have it in abundance to the full until it overflows. In abundance means 
to the full and overflow means you've got more than enough. Why should you have more than enough? So that way you can give to others. That's how we bless other people is how our cup overflows. And God, Jesus, came here for that reason. To fill our cups up. To make us overflow to the top. And we can't do that without faith in our life. You've got to believe that with all your heart. That faith is the victory. There is no place that you can go where faith is not going to be needed. Faith is the victory in everything you do. When I go to work, faith is my victory for what I put up with down there. When I go see my customers, faith is the victory, especially this week. I didn't like where I had to go visit somebody, but I had to do it anyway. And I got a little upset and got that customer taken off of my list and it's on someone else's list. But it's a, because I don't believe in what they're doing. If I... Um, tell you I didn't take the shot, the vaccine or anything else, and you know why I didn't take the shot, then you'll exactly know why I wasn't uh, going to go visit this customer. I probably shouldn't do this, but I did. Anyway, um, just my beliefs, and I'm going to stand firm, whether it be here at the church, whether it be at home or at work. Um, but faith is the victory, for everyone born of God is victorious and overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has conquered and overcome the world, our continuing persistent faith in Jesus, the Son of God, who is the one who is victorious and overcomes the world. It is the one who believes and recognizes the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. We have talked about overcoming sin. In order to have victory in anything, you have to overcome the sin in your life. Do it on a daily basis. Don't just let it pile up because all you're doing is cutting off your communication with God if that's what you do. We then talked about precepts. My wife, she was reading her Bibles this week and she goes, Honey, what's that chapter of precepts? I say it every Sunday. I'm like, Honey, you don't know. Where's precepts at, honey? Psalms 15. I don't want to embarrass her. But it's Psalms 15 if you want to know. Um, and precepts, it gives you the statutes of what a person lives by as a Christian. You want to get a measure of your life. You want to find out what's going on in your life. You want to take a really deep look into how you live your life as a Christian. Take a look at precepts in Psalms 15. We then covered anxiety. We then covered boredom and depression, despair, discontentment, and last week we talked about fear. This week we're going to speak about grief. There is good grief and there's bad grief. Let's understand a little bit about grief. According to the American Heritage Dictionary, deep mental anguish as that arising from bereavement. Synonyms include sorrow, sadness, mournfulness, and gloom. The feelings of grief can often be like the feeling of fear. I've had a lot of, some grief in my life with people passing away and things like that. Um, my dog or whatever the case may be. Um, different relationship with my dog than I've had with any other dog. But uh, uh, there's a state of fear that goes along with that grief. It's like, how are you going to move forward? going on in your life you know it's kind of rough and that's when you really got to depend on God no one ever told me that grief felt so like fear but by C.S. Lewis not all grief is wrong Jesus manifested grief and he was when he saw how others were grieved over the loss of a beloved one when Mary came to the place where Jesus and saw him, she fell at his feet, saying to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Then Jesus saw her sobbing, and the Jews who had come to her also sobbing. He was deeply moved in spirit to the point of anger at the sorrow caused by death, and was troubled, and said, Where have you laid him? They said, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. 
Paul wrote of a continual grief that he had in his heart. I am telling the truth in Christ. I am not lying. My conscience testifies with me, enlightened and prompted by the Holy Spirit, that I have great sorrow and unceasing anguish in my heart. Having grief and expressing it as an important part of overcoming traumatic experiences such as loss of a loved one. Paul and the Ephesian elders expressed their grief as they bid him a sad farewell. When he had said these things, he knelt down and prayed with them all, and they began to weep openly and threw their arms around Paul's neck and repeatedly kissed him, grieving and distressed, especially over the word that he had spoken. They would not see him again, and they accompanied him to the ship. Grief can become a problem when it makes one useless for any service. When one's grief sends them into an extended isolation. When one's grief makes them unable to comfort others in grief. When it begins to produce psychosomatic illness. Many physical illnesses are either caused or made worse by emotional distress. Grief is certainly and to be that can take a toll on the body. While there's a place for grief in the life of the Christian, it is imperative that grief not take control of our lives. Faith in Jesus helps us overcome grief. Jesus provides comfort to the grieving soul. Jesus certainly understands our grief. While in the flesh, he experienced grief. He became flesh to be better suited to come to our aid. Therefore, it was essential that he had to be made like his brothers, mankind, in every respect, so that he might experience becoming merciful and faithful high priest in things related to God, to make atonement, propitiation for the people's sin, thereby wiping away the sin, satisfying divine justice, and providing a way of reconciliation between God and mankind. Because he himself, in his humanity, has suffered and been tempted. He is able to help and provide immediate assistance to those who are being tempted and exposed to suffering. He taught his disciples how to find comfort when troubled. To believe in him. Do not let your heart be troubled, afraid, cowardly. Believe confidently in God and trust in him. Have faith. Hold on it. Rely on it. Keep going. And believe also in me and my Father's house are many dwelling places. If it were not so, I would not have told you. Because I am going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again. And I will take you to myself so that where I am, you may be also. To keep his commandments that we might abide in his love. If you keep my commandments and obey my teachings, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you these things so that my joy and delight may be in you, and that you joy may be made full and complete and overflowing. To pray that we have joy and peace. Until now you have not asked the Father for anything in my name, but now ask and keep asking and you will receive so that your joy may be full and complete. I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace in the world you have tribulation and distress and suffering. But be courageous, be confident, be undaunted, be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. Jesus has overcome the world so that way we may overcome the world. He says that he's come here to comfort us, to take us through all of our problems, all the problems we've discussed and more. You can get through it through faith. I have told you these things so that in me 
you may have perfect peace. That perfect peace is not worrying about anything. It's just whew, very nice and calm. I remember going fishing up in Lander, Wyoming, above it in Louis Lake. I've taken Penny there a couple times, but I was down there by myself. And it was before we got married that I was up there by one of the times by myself. And I just shot her a picture of the lake. It's, it's up in the mountains about five miles and probably a good 4,500 feet up elevation-wise. And the water is just, just calm. Just no ripples, no nothing. And a small little fire going off to my left. My pole dropped in. You know, that's the only thing you heard was my when it dropped into the water. But that's the kind of peace God provides. That's where I went to get away from all the other things that was going on in my life at that time. Just to have the peace. Just the same way I went to that lake is the same way go to God. God is that peace. He provides that calmness. You throw that pull in the water and you hear that ripple, that's you doing that. But that calmness that I experienced up at that lake, you can experience in life also. Be confident and undaunted. Be filled with joy. I have overcome the world. My conquest is accomplished. My victory is abiding. He provides comfort with the promise of our resurrection. Now we do not want you to be uninformed believers about those who are asleep in death so that you will not grieve for them as the others do have no hope beyond this present life. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, as in fact he did, even so God in the same way by raising them from the dead will bring with him those believers who have fallen asleep in Jesus. For we say this to you by the, word, by the Lord's own words, that we who are still alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will be in no way proceed into his presence, those believers who have fallen asleep in death. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven and with a shout of a command, with the voice of the archangel and with the blast of the trumpet of God and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain on the earth will simultaneously be caught up, raptured together with them, the resurrected ones, to the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will always be with the Lord. I'm looking forward to that day. I'm looking for that rapture. There's times I get tired of all the problems and the stuff that happens on this earth. I'm a little upset about what's going over in Europe right now. But I know there's going to be a time that we all go up there. We all know there's going to be tribulation in the last days. You know, whether that be good or bad, we don't know. But I can see what's happening over in Europe. Is this a sign of the times? I don't know. But I know there's going to be a war over there someplace, somehow. And whether this war spreads into what we know is the great and final war, I don't know. Possibly. All I can say is um, be ready. Don't, don't, don't think it's not, but be ready now. Jesus provides a family to help bear our grief. Those who believe in Jesus do his will, and are part of the family. While he was still talking to the crowds, it happened that his mother and brother stood outside asking to speak to him. Someone said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside asking to speak to you. But Jesus replied to them, one who told him, Who is my mother and who is my brother? I've got a lot of brothers and sisters inside this congregation today. That's who we are in Christ. One of the things they did back in the 60s and 70s is say, hey, Sister Shirley, Brother Chuck, Brother Karen, Sister Joanna. We always called each other by that first, just out of respect because we're all a part of that same family. 
and stretching out his hands towards his disciples and all the other followers. He said, Here are my mother and my brothers, for whoever does the will of the Father who is in heaven, by believing in me and following me is my brother and sister and mother. That family is the family of God, the church. In case I am delayed so that you will know that the people ought to conduct themselves in the household of God, which is the church of the living God, the pillar and the foundation of the truth, in which we have a hundredfold brothers, sisters, and mothers, etc. Jesus said, I assure you, and most solemnly say to you, there is no one who has given up a house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or farms for my sake and for the gospel's sake who will not receive a hundred times as much now in the present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and farms, along with the persecutions, and in the age to come, eternal life. As a family, we can bear one another's grief by weeping with those who weep. We rejoice with those who rejoice, sharing others' joy, and weep with those who weep sharing others' grief. By sharing in each other's suffering so that there be a, no division or discord in the body. That is a lack of adaptation of the parts to each other. But that the parts may have the same concern for one another. And if one member suffers, all the parts share the suffering. If one member is honored, all rejoice with it. By comforting one another with the comfort we receive from God. Blessed, gratefully praised, and adored by the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts and encourages us in every trouble so that we will be able to comfort and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For just as Christ's sufferings are ours in abundance, as they overflow to the followers, so also are our comfort, our reassurance, our encouragement, our consolation is abundant through Christ. It is truly more than enough to endure what we must. Sadly, many do not take advantage of the blessings of the family. Those who think they can get what they need by watching religious programs. We know some of you are at home today watching this religious program, watching us on Facebook right now. And if you're sick or can't make it, we understand totally. But you're missing out. You may feel the presence of God through that phone, through that television, or wherever you're watching at. And you may hear us speak about God. You may have all the things we have that are currently inside your home. But one thing you're not receiving is the fellowship we have here at the church where we're with one another. That's why we come together, not only to praise our God, but for the fellowship of fellow Christians. People that are going down the same road that we're going down, that we can express. So we can, if they're grieving, grieve with them. If they're if they're uh, uh, happy about something, we'll be happy with them. We'll celebrate with Ed today, his return, his and Darla's return. We'll do that together as a family in our kitchen. Yes, we have a house here. It's God's house, and our house has a kitchen in it. And I'm sure we could have many bedrooms upstairs if that's what the case may be. But this is God's house, and we are welcomed here. This is where we come to celebrate. Those who may belong to the church but never become involved is another way because you're not getting fellowship by not being involved. And I would encourage those still online that if you're local, we'd love to have you here. But if you're in another state, another country, I would encourage you to go to a local church where you're at to make way you can have that fellowship that we enjoy here with each other. So when their grief comes, they must often bear it alone. Faith is the victory over grief, over a lot of these things. 
It's over all these things. And the way we get through it is through fellowship and faith. Because not only with that fellowship we get encouragement, we get people to go through those things with us, and we enjoy life a lot better. I love coming to this church. I love being here. Even when I'm by myself, I love being here. But when it starts getting people in it, I get excited. I get very excited. Next week, we're going to close out this series on that I've been doing with regards to COVID-19, and we're going to talk about loneliness. I don't know that the pandemic's over, but it seems like we've got blue states and red states just starting to move along, you know, saying, hey, it's okay. You know, we've got to get the federal government to catch up with the, those states about getting rid of masks and things like that. But uh, uh, we're going to move on. We're going to get away from this. We can't just keep concentrating on We're probably going to go back to prayer because I didn't do that online. But uh, after that, we're going to go into, because uh, I know this church is going to grow. And I think we're going to get into a little thing called, what should people expect when they come to Oak Valley Church? What should they expect when they walked inside that door as a guest? What should you expect as a member? And we're going to put this all into biblical terms. It's going to be a way of moving forward, getting past this COVID stuff. You know, we've talked people how to get through it, get through it all, to... Uh, how to handle everything in these uncertain times. And then we broke it down by specifics with regards to anxiety, discontentment, all these other kind of things. But now it's time, time to move on. I'm really, I, you know, we, we, we were going to have our legacy sermon here uh, back in October uh, with regards to where this church started and things of that nature. And we put it off. Because we were just coming live and we didn't feel it was a time to celebrate. You know, it's a time to celebrate. Oak Valley Church has accomplished a lot during COVID-19. Ed was really surprised when he walked in here today. So I may, you know, go ahead, rather than wait until October, maybe do the legacy sermon again and get that on. Because we've got a lot, of, a lot more pictures and videos and things like that that I want to share. But uh, anyway... I'm getting excited about everything that's going to happen and things like that. Thank you, Father, for being with us today. Thank you for taking our little church and making us feel like we're the biggest thing around, Father. You, your blessings all over us. You shine a light on us, Father. And we can only say that it's not because of us, but because of you. It's not for our glory, Father, but for yours. The more that this church can put out glory and abundance for everything father it's all because of you it's nothing that i've done it's nothing my wife's done or anyone that's helped around here father it is all because of you all the glory will go to you father and lord as we go throughout our week please bless us and let us continue in the faith that you have given us so we know every step we take father will be a victory in our life. In your name I pray, amen.